This is my husband's dream actually. He wanted me to become a woman entrepreneur. That's the main thing. Oh. I'm a simply housewife. Oh. Uh, he he encouraged, encouraged me actually. All what? my savings I put in India. All your savings? Yes. Oh. Every hmm. setup I did. Inch by inch I did everything here. It was a nice happy sort of a combination between the sweetness of that tenga pal. Mm. So good. And the savory, slightly aromatic chickpea korma. The outside of that paniyaram becomes almost crisp and crackling, but on the inside, it is rather soft. Ah, I can see some onions in there, some curry leaf. Mmm, tasty goodness. Hi folks, hope you're doing well. We've stepped out early evening here in Bengaluru to this small eatery that I am told was born under extremely difficult circumstances. To be honest, I don't know much about the place except for the fact that the food that they serve is quite good. And therefore, we've decided to visit this small restaurant and hopefully help them find their feet. Well, here we are. The place is called Neraya, the Madras Kitchen. And I think it's located on the first floor. But there's a fairly elaborate uh, full meals menu here. Of course, it's about 4.15 in the evening and I've come for tiffin. But I suspect I should have also considered coming for lunch. There's some rice, sambar, rasam, curd, kara kolambu, kutu, poriyal, appalam, kesri, masal vade for all of rupees 105. Huh? So I think the tone of the cuisine here is certainly that which leans towards Madras or perhaps Tamil cuisine. Hello. Hello. Namaskara, how are you? Oh, fine. How are you? I'm doing well. You're Mrs. Sumati Charles. Yes, I'm fine. So when you say the Madras kitchen is food from Tamil Nadu, yes. is it? Yes. So I'm with Mrs. Sumati Charles, yes. uh, whose brainchild the Madras Kitchen is. And how did this begin? Before two years, myself and my husband started. After six to seven months, I had a little break. Last year, my husband passed away. Oh, After I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. After that, I started this business again. Where did you begin this first? Uh, Indra Nagar. In, in Indra Nagar, Jeevan Biva Nagar. Okay, so was it a restaurant like this? Yeah, it's a small uh, restaurant. My husband was a software engineer. Huh. He, uh, he supported me actually. That's your daughter? Yes. Hema. Hema. Uh, my elder daughter is doing BCom. Uh, year. Uh. Another one PU second year. Third, my son uh, PU second year. Alright. So after your husband, then you said you set this up to basically yes. support the family, yes, is that? Yes, yes. This is my husband's dream actually. He wanted me to become a woman entrepreneur. That's the main thing. Ah. I'm a simply housewife. Ah. Uh, he he encouraged me actually. So this is a fairly big restaurant from what I see. So how is the restaurant doing now? Yeah, uh, it's slowly picking up. Slowly picking up. Okay. Okay. And who are your customers mostly? Office people. Office people. Okay. And you're open from morning till night. Yes, morning till night. So I can see, of course, all the uh, Tamil dishes here. I can yes. see some appam. I can see some paniyaram. That's what your uh, thali is, it? Yes, yes. Okay. And these reviews that I see here. Yeah. This I got from Indra Nagar branch actually. That is our shop, small shop. How old is this place now? April 20. Okay, so you've been open only for th two yeah, months. Yeah, two months. So what do we have now to taste? Nah, today we have appam, uh, uh, paniyaram, uh, dosa, barota, freshly made barotas, uh, chapatis, kurma for channa kurma is there. Channa kurma, uh, yeah. wonderful. So you have some vada there. Yes. What is this? This is meal maker vada. So it's made with soya chunks. Yes. And curry leaf. These are your chutneys. Yes. This is a kara chutney. Tomato, uh, garlic, then uh, onions. onions. Yeah, onions. Ah, and that's your coconut chutney. Yes, coconut chutney. Do you also have urukatle that goes in that? Yes. Kutani? Okay. Yes. Palya. Oh, that's a palya for the dosa. Yes, yeah. This is a channa. Channa, a chickpeas. Yeah. So he's your master chef. Yes, yes. He comes from uh, Karaikudi. From Karaikudi. Yeah, chicken nut cook. Ah, chicken nut cook. Chetinad. 
So he made a channa masala. Yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. Channa kurma. Channa kurma. Okay, sorry. Not the channa masala. It's a channa kurma. Yes. What's your name? Karpaya. Karpaya. From Karai Kudi. Karai Kudi. Then what else do you have? Yeah, appam I have. I will give you coconut milk with appam. Ah, coconut milk with appam. Yes. Tenga pal. Yeah, tenga pal. Ah, at least I got one word right. Ah, <laughs> wonderful. I like the fact that your kitchen is very clean, very organized. Yeah. Thank ah. you so much. So are you here in the restaurant all the time? Yeah, morning. I'll come at five o'clock. Huh. Ah, ten o'clock. All one. my savings I put in. All your savings. Yes. Oh. Every hmm. setup I did, inch by inch I did everything here. What do you serve for breakfast? Breakfast, idli, uh, puri, uh -huh. dosa varieties, men pongal, ghee pongal, uh, uh, sweet uh, sweet pongal, chow chow bath. Chow chow bath. Yeah. Puri masala. And then lunch is lunch, uh, thali, thali. Uh, Indian meals, uh, fried rice, uh, noodles, then one variety rice, lemon rice or uh, curd rice like that. And then evening snacks. Snacks. It's all vegetarian. Yes, pure veg. Pure vegetarian. Lovely. So what should we taste today? Yeah, appam. Okay, wonderful. So we'll taste the appam with the tenga pal. Okay. Paneeram is also yeah, there. Paniyaram, no? So you didn't tell me. Yeah, paneeram is also there. Huh? So uh, we'll taste the paneeram. Okay. Paneeram again is served with the chutneys. Yes, chutneys. Yeah. Wonderful. Let's do that. Paneeram batter. Paneeram batter. So what is there in this? Uh, rice, urad dal, uh. then uh, onion, uh. Uh, curry leaves, then uh, thali ko that uh, mustard seed. Mustard seeds. Yeah, ah. Urad dal, ah like that. So this is a Tamil style sambar. Yes, yes. So no jaggery. No jaggery. Brinjal and uh, drumstick will be there. Oh, that's your sambar masala. Uh, yeah, this is a own masala. So you make this at home? Yeah. Mmm. Sombu. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Jiri is there. Coriander. Coriander. Pepper also is there. Yeah. We huh. never use baking soda. Okay. Uh, I use coconut water. You keep it for fermentation, yes, is it? Yes. So of course, in the good old days, they would use curd, no? Yes, yes, curd. But uh, now, of course, you can't use curd. She doesn't use yeast, so therefore, tenga thani. Yeah, tenga. Wonderful. So you basically keep it to ferment for a day, yeah. and then that goes into your batter. Yes. So your batter is basically rice flour. Yes, rice flour. And uh, little uh, urudar, uh, fenugreek. Half. Yeah. Coconut, coconut milk. Yeah. And how much rice? Rice uh, three. Three of this, yeah, yeah. and then tenga thani. How much? Ah, yeah, half. Uh, yeah. No water. No water. These must be all recipes that you would cook at home. I tried several times without baking soda and all. Idli uh. also without uh, soda. It be very soft. And how do you achieve that softness without soda? Uh, I soak the rice uh, uh, overnight actually. So in this, this is a Tamil style idli. Yes. So the rice is ground. Yes. Huh? Yes. Uh, what is the ratio of the rice to the uh, urad? Five is to one. And do you mix it and keep it to ferment together or separate fermentation? No, no, uh, mixed together. Mixed together. And how long do you keep to ferment? Uh, eight hours. Right now idli is there? Yes, yeah. I will give you. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't expect that. Idli is normally only in the morning for yes, breakfast. Yes, yeah. Okay, I think Sumati has uh, made sure that she's got enough things for me to taste. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be tasting the appam. I'm going to be tasting the paniaram. Yes. With the chana korma. Yes. Huh? And uh, the sambar with the dosai. Yes, dosai. And some idli as well with okay. both the chutneys. Okay. The tenga chutney and the kara chutney. Yes, kara chutney. Uh, wonderful. I love that glossy shine on that appam. Because of coconut milk. Because of coconut milk. Yeah. Because of the tenga pal. pal. So I was just talking with uh, Sumati Charles, and she was telling me the circumstances under which this eatery came into being. It is basically her tribute to a dream that her husband Babu Charles had for her, and uh, she's trying to fulfil that. And in the course of doing so, also hoping to support her family. You know, life can be very tough at times, and can lead you. into unexpected situations circumstances that you may have never dreamt of 
but what's important is how you bounce back from that or how you try to emerge from that and i think that's what mrs sumati charles is trying so hard to do i've not tasted the food yet but just speaking to her about the recipes the memories that she has connected with the dishes what goes into the making of the various items her philosophy behind the food that she's trying to serve here certainly tells you that uh, there's a lot of thought that's gone into the food here so the place is rather simple but very nicely done it feels rather cozy rather homely especially with sumati charles around uh, even the staff are the sort who seem very friendly so all in all is a sort of place that you go to to taste some uh, nice food in a pleasant sort of a setting This is an appam that certainly seems to have a bit of weight. You can feel the weight of its fluffy center. We're going to make a beginning with the frilly edge of that appam. Taste it first just by itself. Mm. The hint of tartness somewhere in there, tasting the flavor of the coconut milk. Not too much sweetness in this appam. And that's where this particular accompaniment to the appam is served with comes into play because that's the Mm, sweetened coconut milk What's nice is that the coconut milk isn't too sweet it's not cloyingly sweet just has enough sweetness that it delivers to your tongue and then very quickly disappears I want to make sure that I soak my appam in that sweet tenga pal completely Mm Place it in your mouth, and all that tenga pal that's trapped within the pores of the appam gushes out. I have that channa korma too, but I'm so happy tasting that appam with that pal. Hmm, there's a bit of sourness in that appam, and that contrasts rather nicely with that slight sweetness in that coconut milk. I think next let's taste some of that channa korma. This is basically the chickpeas. Hmm. I'm tasting in there perhaps a little bit of the hard spices that go into the making of this chickpea korma. I think there's probably some chekke, some cinnamon that goes into it. I'm registering some of those flavors from the aromatic hard spices. The chickpea is cooked rather well, retains its shape, but is soft and creamy. There's also some potato that's gone into it. This is a nice happy sort of a combination between the sweetness of that tenga pal. Mm. So good. And the savory slightly aromatic chickpea korma. Is there some chekke that goes into that? Ah. That's what I can taste. Nalla irka. I reconfirmed with them. They said there's some chekke that goes into that. So good. I want to make sure that I submerge that piece of appam in that tenga pal. Although I'm appreciative of that chickpea korma, but give me just the appam and the tenga pal, and I'll be a happy man. Mm. So good. super paniyaram ah of course out here self service but i think i was so lost in that appam and tenga pal that decided to serve me the paniyaram on the table so this is also what's called the paddu here in karnataka it's a dosa batter and dosa batter that's embellished with a bunch of things there's some curry leaves i think that go into it onions too served with a tomato onion chutney and some coconut chutney as well what's interesting is the texture of that paniyaram it's the same dosa batter but because it's cooked on the tawa with the hollows over some oil the outside of that paniyaram becomes almost crisp and crackling but on the inside it is rather soft ah I can see some onions in there some 
करी लीफ टेस्टी गुडनेस आई लव द वेल ऑफ क्रिसमस दैट फॉर्म्स द आउटर स्किन ऑफ दिस पनी आरम एंड ऑन द इन साइड द पनी आरम इज सॉफ्ट I'm also biting now into some lentils. I think there is some uh, fried lentils too that go into the paneer. So it's also an interesting play of textures. So I'm tasting that delicate crispness on the outside. On the inside, it's soft, fluffy, and then I'm biting into the wet crunch of the onions. And then somewhere in there, also the crispness of some lentils. Huh? There's also some parupu inside this. Huh? Ah. Delicious. Hmm. So good. And this time, I'm going to taste that with some of that chutney. Maybe the coconut chutney first. The coconut is ground rather fine. There's a bit of spice that I detect in the green chili, but not over the top. Hmm. I'm biting into the crisp crunch of some of the lentils that are hidden within that paneerum. This is a sort of paneerum that needs no accompaniment, to be honest. Hmm. This time with some of the tomato onion chutney. Hmm. The tartness of that tomato, and I can also taste the heat of some chilies in there. That coconut chutney is papa or pavam, as I would say in Tamil, but that tomato onion chutney is certainly that spicy, spicy character. Hmm, so good. I didn't know what to expect when I walked in here. All that I knew was that here was a story that I wanted to support. Of course, with the help of all you food lovers watching this episode. But should be told, both the dishes that I've tasted up until now, that appam with the sweet tenga pal, and that chickpea korma, and now that paneeram too with both the chutneys, have been rather special. Forget the fact that this is a small enterprise that needs to be supported because of the circumstances that it came up in. But the food here is certainly the sort that shines on its own might. At least the two dishes that I've tasted thus far. I love that crackle of that outer skin of that paneerum. Mm. So, did you have the uh, the South Indian thali? I had a South Indian thali. Ah, with with the kutu and all that. That's good. Ah. And I took only half the thali. Huh. I didn't want chapati. I want half the rice. Huh. And I really found it uh, exhilarating. Very good. wonderful. Idli sambar chutney, very nice. In this, uh, apart from the tomato, do you also put some tamarind in that? Yeah. You put some tamarind, little tamarind in that. Very nice, excellent. So this, of course, is the uh, Tamil idli, which is very different from the uh, idli that you typically find in Karnataka. So in Karnataka, in Bengaluru, we use the akitari, which is the rice rava that goes into the making of the idli, along with the uddu. So, do is ground separately, fermented, and then before the idli is steamed, the akki tari goes into the uddu along with a little bit of salt, etc. In this, both the rice and the uddu are ground separately and then combined and fermented for about seven or eight hours. And therefore, the texture of the idli is also very different. So, a Karnataka or a Bengaluru idli will have will be a little granular, whereas a Tamil style idli will be pasty in its texture, and this idli is served, of course, with the two chutneys, the coconut chutney and the kara chutney, which is the tomato onion chutney, and some sambar. And of course, the sambar is also a savory sambar. No sweetness at all in that sambar, but it's fortified with the eggplant and also some drumstick. And you can taste the granular texture 
of the parupu of the lentils in that sambar. Time now to go to the idli. I can taste the flavor of that uddu, that steamed uddu in that idli. The idli is very soft, very pasty and I think the salt that will benefit from a dip in the chutney, the coconut chutney to begin with. Mm. Very simple, home-like sort of dish. I'm told there's no soda that goes into the making of this idli at all. Notwithstanding that, that idli is soft. And I think the texture of that coconut chutney, where the coconut is ground fine and also fortified with some urukadle, the texture of that is a sort that coats that idli rather well, lending it its delicate coconutty flavour. There's also the seasoning in that chutney, some saswe, some curry leaves, some urad. There are also flavours that chutney with its nuttiness. If you want to pull things in a different direction, well, that's where that spicy kara chutney comes to play. Mm. Your first taste, of course, a bit of the flavour that comes from the seasoning. And then the puli. The puli of the tomato, the tamarind that goes into it, and then the spice. The spice of the chilli. I am told there is a guntur chilli that goes into the making of that chutney. But I think the best way to enjoy this idli is with some of that sambar. Mm. You know, to me that murungakai, that drumstick is the equivalent of finding a bone marrow in a curry. You want to make sure you extract the pulpy kernels. This drumstick though is a little too mature. So the kernels almost crunch like a nut. But I'm sure they've imbued their goodness into that sambar. Mm. All the three dishes that we've tasted thus far are the sort that make for compelling reasons to visit the Madras cafe. And also our neighbouring table. The gentleman was here for lunch. He liked the food so much that he brought his colleagues back for a coffee and tiffin. When it comes to good food, eventually, I think it finds its takers. Sometimes the process can be a little slow and that's where I'm hoping this episode will help expedite that. But eventually, the food will deservedly find its customers. I think there's also probably a little bit of sugar that they put in that chutney. Do you add a little sugar in that coconut chutney? Nothing. Sweetness from the coconut. Some garlic that I'm tasting in that sambar there. Delicious. We're sitting in this eatery here. You know, it's a very simple sort of space. But the food that I'm tasting is probably the sort of food that Sumati Charles would feed you if you were visiting a home. That's a sort of homely, comforting, tasty nature of the food that I'm tasting here. Masal dosa. So this is of course the Tamil style of dosa, uh, which is flat, crisp. There's some uh, masala is there inside that. Wonderful. Dosa is uh, threatening to spill out from this tray. It's a ghee roast dosa, but it seems to be a dosa that's roasted rather lightly, or perhaps the light color is a function 
of what goes into the batter. So natural actually, we put uh, fenugreek is little actually. Fenugreek little. Yeah, little. And then it's the rice and the uddu. Uddu, same. And what is the ratio? The ratio on the 2 kg is to 400 grams. 2 kilo of rice? Yeah, 400 grams. So what rice? Dosa rice? Dosa rice. And is there avalakki and all that goes into this? Nothing. So it's only the uddu, the rice and some fenugreek. Do you put a little bit of sugar in it? No. Ah, so that's the reason why so the color of the dosa is light. Ah, wonderful. So that's the difference between the dosa that people eat here and the Tamil style of dosa. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. The dosa is only the uddu and the akki with a little bit of fenugreek seed so therefore the texture of the dosa too is such that when I had this last bite with that palya the dosa is so fragile that it almost disappears leaving just a trace of its flavor what you're tasting more is that palya is that masale I want to taste that dosa just by itself without any palya this time I can definitely taste the lush flavor of the nei, of the tuppa this time. You know, this doesn't feel like a commercial dosa in any form. It's very simple as we learned from Sumati Charles. It's only the rice and the uddu in the ratio of 2 kilos to about 400 grams from the rice to the uddu and a little bit of mente. So that's really what you're tasting. This is a very simple home style sort of a dosa with the lushness of some tuppa. Without the palya, the dosa can feel a bit a tad dry and I guess that's where that chutney will help. If you want a little bit of spice, the tomato onion chutney. There's a whisper of a crunch, it's not a dosa that will be very kadak. The colour also is very light because in many commercial establishments they also add a bit of sugar that helps in the caramelization and therefore the ensuing darkish brown, golden brown colour that you see on the crust. Out here, this dosa is much paler when compared to those. So to me, this is a pleasing sort of a dosa but a tad less impressionable then the previous three dishes that I tasted. Let's taste it with some sambar. That sambar, I love. Mm. I love the lentil goodness of that sambar. Some coffee to close things here at the Madras kitchen. Ah, that coffee is a sort that hits the spot after four plates of tiffin. Huh? This uh, what coffee powder do you use in this? That's chicory. This is only a coffee that. you can chew on and that is a character of the proportion of chicory that you find in that so I, as I guess this is a coffee that has 30% chicory but more importantly the sort that seals the deal after an indulgent tiffin here at the Madras kitchen when I came in here I came in to support a small enterprise I'd heard that the food was good but I didn't really expect too much I of course enjoyed my conversation with Sumati Charles and a small team here but what I enjoyed most of all was the food that I tasted here at the Madras kitchen leave aside the compelling circumstances that this eatery was born into the food be it the idli with the sambar and the chutney the appam with the sweet tenga pal and that channa korma the paniyaram again with the chutneys and also that masal dosa, other sort that place this humble eatery on the food lovers must try list. I think if the Madras kitchen continues 
with the same consistency and the food that they do which i am sure they will the day is not too far away when you will find this as a hidden gem on a bengaluru food trail so if you want to taste some delicious tamil style tiffin and sapad definitely find your way to the madras kitchen here on kasan street i hope you enjoyed this rather sumptuous tiffin evening until the next time take care stay safe stay strong and happy eating and drinking If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe like share and leave a comment below happy eating